Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video I am going to be bringing you another list of 10 books that I am convinced are going to be five stars. I was just going to list out these books like I have done previously however I thought it might be a little bit more fun if I do the five star predictions book tag instead. So this was created by Chloe Frizzle. I'll leave the original video linked in the description just in case you would like to find out more but basically there's 10 prompts to help you pick 10 books that you are convinced are going to be five stars. So we're going to kick things off with prompt number one, which is what is a five star prediction by a favourite author? For this I've chosen My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologies by Frederick Backman. I always struggle to say that title, <laughs> but this is by one of my favourite authors. I've read three books by Frederick Backman and given two of those books five stars. So I'm fairly confident that this is also going to be a five stars. This is about a young girl who I think is around seven or eight and her grandmother passes away and it's about her dealing with grief for the first time. Frederick Backman books are usually quite character driven and they usually have a lot of social commentary. I don't think I'm ready to read this book just now however I find it really cathartic reading about characters in fiction who are going through experiences that I've been through. I feel like this is going to be quite emotional and any book that can hit me in the emotions is going to be five stars. Prompt number two is a book where someone else loving it has gotten you excited. The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This has been on my TBR ever since it came out and I know it's one of Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots favourite books and that has me really excited. I've seen quite a lot of people actually rave about this book. It's a murder mystery set within a small community and it's told entirely in mixed media. So you have letters, emails, transcripts and things like that. Mixed media is something that I really love in a book. I feel like it gives a story more depth and really brings it to life and makes it feel real. I read Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter last year and that was told in a similar way. So even though I didn't quite give that five stars, it wasn't because of the multimedia element. So hopefully this will will be five stars. I know that Janice Hallett has quite a few books that are told in that similar way. So if I love the appeal, then I have even more books that I could potentially enjoy. Prompt number three is a book where the blurb or the tropes are so your thing. One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware is a book that actually comes out in May. And this has been compared to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which I haven't actually read. <laughs> However, I have read quite a few books that are supposed based on And Then There Were None and I've really enjoyed them. I love a closed circle murder mystery and alongside that this also is about a reality TV show and I love books that are about reality TV shows. It follows a couple or a couple of couples who are on an island competing for a cash prize when they're cut off from the mainland and I'm guessing that people start getting murdered. Like I said I love an isolated thriller. I'm expecting this to have incredible atmosphere, lots of twists and turns that I don't see come in. So yeah, I will be shocked if this isn't five stars, considering I've given Ruth Ware five stars in the past. I have also given some of her books two stars though, so this could go either way. Prompt number four is your most anticipated future release. Now there were a few books that I could have chosen for this, some of them I've actually already mentioned, but the one that I've gone for is A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping by Sangu Mandana. This comes out later this year and I am so excited because The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches was one of my favourite books of last year and this is written by the same author. It's about a witch who is trying to run an inn as well as reclaim her magic and also avoid falling in love all at the same time. So it sounds like it might be a little bit chaotic but the one thing that I loved about the author's previous book was The Found Family and the characters so I'm hoping this is also just as heartwarming. Prompt number five is a bold risky prediction that you need to manifest into five stars. Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir is a book that I am intrigued by however everyone I hear talking about this book mentions that it's <laughs> very divisive. Some people seem to love it and some people hate it and say it's one of the worst books that they've ever 
red. So I feel like this is quite a risky choice, but I really want to love it. It's pitched as lesbian necromancers in space. On the front, it actually says lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. And I've heard it also has some kind of mystery element, which does have me intrigued. I've also heard that this is quite humorous and some people find it hilarious, whereas others don't find it funny at all. I have heard that a good way to approach this book is to listen to the audiobook while reading along physically. And I do have the audiobook, so I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. It does sound really unique, and that is something that I look for in fantasy and sci-fi. So fingers crossed that this one does work for me. Prompt number six is a book you've been putting off reading because your hopes are so high. For this, I've gone with The Museum of Ordinary People by Mike Gale, which came out a few years ago now, and I have owned it on my Kindle for the past few years, but for some reason I've been putting off reading it, and I think it's because I have loved some of Mike Gale's books in the past. I think I've read three of his books, and I've given them all either four or five stars, so there's no reason why this won't also be a four or a five stars, but Mike Gale writes these really emotional contemporary stories that that always make me cry and I feel like if I read this and it doesn't make me cry then I'm going to be disappointed. I feel like that's quite a lot of pressure <laughs> to put on a book so that's why I've been putting off reading it. I believe this is about a woman who is sorting through her childhood home getting it ready for sale after her mom has passed away and I think she then comes across an archive of letters and photographs and she begins to investigate the stories behind them. I feel like it's going to be quite character driven and I'm hoping it does hit me in the emotions in the same way that Mike Gale's other books have. Prompt number seven is a book that has a beautiful cover that you've already fallen in love with. The Girl with a Loud In Voice by Abby Dare is a book that I have been really intrigued about for a while. I first heard about it because it was nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards and I can remember looking through the list and this cover really stood out to me. I think the colour palette is really bold and striking and so when I saw it in a 99p Kindle deal I snapped it up but it's been sitting on my Kindle ever since and I still haven't read it. I believe this is about a 14 year old Nigerian girl who really wants an education however her family are very poor and she is removed from school and sold to a much older man to become his third wife. So it sounds like it's going to be very hard hitting. It does have a 4.43 average rating on Goodreads so I'm confident that I'm gonna rate it quite highly. Prompt number eight is the next book in a series you've loved. I don't know if I can count this because it's technically a prequel but it is the next book that I need to read in the series and that is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. I actually put The Priory of the Orange Tree on my last five star predictions list and it wasn't quite five stars. I mean it was basically a five stars. I gave it 4.5 stars because I had some issues with the pacing and the ending was a bit anticlimactic but I have high hopes for this. It's a chunky one, but I am planning on reading this in May, so it's not going to linger on this list for as long as The Priory of the Orange Tree did. I have heard that the beginning of this feels a little bit like a textbook, but the one thing that I loved the most about Priory of the Orange Tree was the world. So if Samantha Shannon spends several hundred pages giving me information about this world, then I don't care because that is what I've enjoyed so far the most about this series. I did still like the characters and I enjoyed the plot in the previous book but what I loved the most was feeling immersed in this world so very excited to be picking this up soon. Hopefully it does end up being a five stars because Priory of the Orange Tree came so close. Prop number nine is what is a book that's popular and you want to get on that train? I have a feeling that my cousin is going to be very excited to see this book on this list because she has been telling me to read it for years. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo is the book that I'm talking about. This won the Booker Prize in 2019 and it was also shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. So I feel like it definitely counts as a popular book. I believe this is about several different characters and you're following them on these different journeys. I think it puts you inside the minds of these characters and shows you 
to their very diverse experiences. I've heard the writing is very poetic and I have been specifically recommended the audiobook for this one. Apparently it is very good, very well narrated. The final prompt is a book that just gives that five star vibe. This Beer Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez is a book that I bought quite recently. I bought this and The Vanished Birds when I went to New York in February and the reason that I bought them is because I am convinced that Simon Jimenez is going to become a new favourite author for me. I've heard that their books are very theme driven and unique and that's like a buzzword for me. If you tell me that a book is unique then I'm going to want to read it. <laughs> I've heard that it's beautifully constructed and a lot of the booktubers who share a similar taste in fantasy to me have said that this is one of their favourite books of all time or even if it's not an all time favourite they've given it five stars so I am convinced that I'm also going to give it five stars. I could have also put The Vanished Birds on this list to be fair but I could only pick one. <laughs> in terms of the plot I believe this is following two warriors who are accompanying an ancient god across this broken world and they are searching for freedom but also a way to bring down the royal family. There might be a lot more to it than that but I have heard that the writing in this is stunning so fingers crossed it will be five stars. So those are the 10 more books that I am convinced are going to be five stars. But obviously these are the four that I own physically and then the rest I either have on my Kindle already or I can get access to them through my library. Last time I did this kind of video it took me nearly three years to read all of the books but this time I am determined to read them within the next year or so. We'll see if it actually happens but yeah let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and whether they were five stars for you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye!